In this block, lots of unfortunate family drama involving President Trump, but also his top advisor, Kellyanne Conway. Let's start off with Kellyanne. She's been with Donald Trump since the campaign and has been one of the advisors who has stuck around the longest. Things, they're smooth between Conway and her boss, but at home, anything but. Her husband, George Conway, a D.C. attorney who's also founder of the Lincoln Project. That's a group of Republicans who are against the president. He's been an outspoken critic of Trump now for years. Here's an example of the Lincoln Project's handiwork. I am the law and order candidate. Who's he kidding? Trump's campaign manager is a felon. His deputy campaign manager is a felon. His national security advisor, a felon. His foreign policy advisor is a felon. His personal lawyer is a felon. His longtime personal advisor, a felon. Nixon was bad. Trump is worse. Ouch. Now, the Conway's 15-year-old daughter, Claudia, has become a big part of the story. Claudia now saying her mother's job is ruining her life, her words. She's devastated that Kellyanne is speaking at the RNC, and now Claudia wants emancipation from her parents. She's also been posting nasty messages about her mom for months prior to this. Now, Kellyanne has decided to leave the White House to spend more time with her family, saying the next chapter in her life will be, quote, less drama and more mama. That brings us to the Trumps. Last month, the president's niece, Mary, she released a book that became an instant bestseller. The title, Too Much and Never Enough, How My Family Created the World's Most Dangerous Man. That book, it spells out Donald's cruelty, lying and cheating, lack of empathy and narcissism. Mary, a clinical psychologist with a PhD, so she knows quite a bit about that. And now another member of the Trump family, someone who the president has spoken highly of in the past, is lashing out. I'm talking about Marianne Trump Barry. She's a former federal judge in New Jersey and a highly respected one at that. The president even said his sister would make an excellent Supreme Court justice. She's also kept a very low profile over the past four plus years. That is, until now. The aforementioned niece, Mary, recorded her aunt and those tapes just released by the Washington Post. I'm going to play for you now a few clips, starting with this one. This goddamn tweet and the lie. Oh, my God, I'm talking to really, but you know, it, it, the change of stories, the lack of preparation, the lying, the holy <laughs> But he's appealing to the base, what they're doing with the kids at the border. I mean... Marion Trump also spoke about her brother's academic history. Uh, and he went to Fordham for one year, and then he got into University of Pennsylvania. I guess he had somebody take, his, take the exams. No way. And he had somebody rest, take his entrance exams? SATs or whatever. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's what I do believe. <laughs> I, need, I even remember the name. Now, I'll wrap up with this one, where the president is amazed that his sister reads instead of watching Fox News. He calls, and he says, did you watch Fox News? I said, no. Why not? I said, I don't watch much television at all. Pause. What do you do? I read. Pause. What do you read? Books. I'm sure there are those watching tonight delighting in the family crises facing Trump and his enablers. Maybe surprising to some of you, I'm not one of them. The Conway family, already a curiosity with Kellyanne's unflinching defense of this president, while her husband not only condemns her boss, but even rallies fellow disillusioned Republicans to support his first impeachment and now November defeat. Add to it now the daughter, who leads hundreds of thousands of her online followers in her daily attacks on social media as she brings down not just Trump, but her own mom. Next to the Trumps, or remove children from the equation, but we hear Donald's own sister blisteringly take down her president brother as an unprincipled, uninformed buffoon who has no business being in the Oval Office. This again comes with an ugly side, 
as her comments were surreptitiously recorded by an author niece trying to immunize herself from a possible lawsuit. Now, both the stories are an indictment not just on the clickbait generation we live in when we have likes and followers somehow connoting self-worth. Just ask the president, who won't go a day without reminding us how many people subscribe to his Twitter feed and how his dangerous lies and toxicity drive not only the news cycle, but the widening divisions in America. These two family sagas, they share a common protagonist. But as we all know too well, in so many of our lives, whether it's friends or family, this president and his seemingly daily pyrotechnics, they bring out the worst among us. I've seen decent people turn ugly, tolerant people unwilling to share a meal or a holiday with the other side, and friendships dissolve because Donald Trump demands that you are either with him or against his definition of America. I know that between now and November, this will only get worse, and if and when he loses in the fall, it impossibly may get even more dangerous with a wounded president with nothing to lose, willing to take down anything and anyone to delegitimize an election. While I wish the internal family drama stayed private, I just hope for all of us that Trump doesn't leave more of us to ask for a national emancipation after an ugly November. Up next, everyone. The Postmaster General grilled on Capitol Hill again today, and Democrats continue to say there were political motivations behind the service cuts at the Postal Service. After the break, a congresswoman who got to ask some of the questions, joins us, and she's livid with the answers she received.